Okay, so we come to the next speaker, which the first time the speaker is already on the podium before and is behind the scene, and that's quite important. So, Michael, Michael Ashburner, at the Department of Genetic of the University of Cambridge, is a geneticist. I mean, for the use, this user community where we are in bioinformatics, he, of course, best known as the founder of Flybase and Go. He was also for a long time the research program coordinator and joint head of ZBI, and this together with Graham Cameron, which I don't think we have acknowledged enough during this meeting, I mean, because uh, Graham was instrumental for a lot of things and uh, basically still is, I mean, and he has been uh, behind the scene, I would say, is quite modest. And uh, unfortunately, we wanted to invite him, but there was a problem of tide. I'm not uh, joking, I mean, he basically had a boat trip and he could not do it at a certain date, I mean, because of the tide, if I'm correct. And so he could not come here because of the tide, which is a better excuse than Varig. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, he's, I mean, to, to go back to Michael, he's both the Pope of Drosophila in ontology and also known for advocating open access to biological information. As geographical link, it's easy, it's Cambridge, Inkston, and anywhere else in the world because uh, Michael is always flying uh, to different places, giving interesting talks, and it's, uh, I mean, you, when you meet him, you just ask him a question, where were you before last week, and where were you, are you going to be next week? If you're lucky to meet him in, uh, at EBI. And Bowlings, I mean, it would be stupid to cite specific people because who does not know or has not interacted with Michael? I think this email epitomized Michael. It's from 91. It says, I will not release until I have the table of separation in decent shape, so we're awful mess, and so on. I'm cleaning them up. Given my schedule of trips and other business, not to say that I still want to do some science, I expect a new release in July. Mind you, I could prepare a table of gene and AC for you at any time. So, always flying away somewhere, passionate for science, does not compromise on quality, and responsive to any query. He also, maybe you don't know, but he also worked in the building trade. Here he's basically showing us future customers of the EBI, I mean, what he just built. I mean, so, so that was a side visit, and Michael was showing us the EBI. And if, like me, you're interested in all those juicy tidbits of what happened between seller and public labs, he just published a, a book which is quite wonderful because uh, you will then learn all of those things which happen behind the scene, which is always quite interesting. So, Michael, thank you for being here. Um, I have 25 minutes? You have 25 minutes. I thought I had half an hour. And five for questions. I have a Swiss watch. <laughs> Where's my talk? Amos, this is a PC. <laughs> oh, God, look at this. This is ridiculous. How do I go back? Well, it should be the mouse here. Can somebody bring some mouse, which was here? I want that one. Yeah. That's it. And this was supposed to be mouse. So this is my tribute to... Amos and his um, slight corruption from my classical education. And of course, uh, the Drosophila community uh, loves Swisspot and Amos so much uh, that we even named a gene after him. And someone else must love Amos a lot, uh, and we've heard quite a lot, uh, uh, for, for, for example, from Barent. Uh, months uh, a couple of days ago about Wikipedia, and uh, Amos even has his own uh, Wiki Wikipedia page, which, if you read it carefully, uh, tells you when his birthday is. So on November the 22nd, uh, we can all send happy birthday cards to Amos. <coughs> so I'm going to talk a bit about the Go, uh, not a lot, because Judy Blake... Um, Judy Blake uh, talked about this two days ago, or yesterday, no, two days ago. Um, but I want to talk uh, 
uh, uh, uh, more about more general things about ontologies. But first, the GO. The GO, as you know, um, has three orthogonal, at uh, present orthogonal ont ontologies uh, for biological process, molecular function, and cellular component. Uh, and uh, GO was designed uh, for the annotation of gene products uh, within the context of uh, the model organism databases. Uh, and the three uh, founding databases of the GO were the mouse genome uh, database, uh, which you heard about, uh, the Saccharomyces genome database, uh, and Flybase. And now GO is used uh, by uh, well over 20 uh, model organism databases. And that, it, it was for the annotation of gene products, the attributes of gene products, uh, within the context of model organism databases uh, that Go was designed. And uh, the, uh, Go, unfortunately, hasn't quite met uh, 20,000 terms. Uh, these are yesterday's numbers, uh, but it, it is, is now quite large, uh, with essentially 20,000 terms. And the uh, annotation uh, of uh, gene products uh, within the model organism databases and very importantly uh, within uh, uh, Uniprot and other uh, multi-organism databases uh, such as that at Tiger. Uh, these are all uh, found uh, to be found uh, in a single database which allows a single point of query uh, through uh, either scripting or through a browser uh, such as the friend of Go, Amigo. And this is a small sna snapshot shot of uh, a go and you and uh, uh, showing uh, transmembrane receptor protein ty tyrosine kinase activity and you can go for that uh, and get a list of all the genes uh, in all uh, all the proteins in uh, all these model organism databases and in uniprot uh, uh, which have been annotated with this term from a single point or, or you could do that uh, uh, programmatically by downloading uh, 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 the database uh, and writing an SQL query. And well over uh, a quarter of a million different proteins have now been annotated uh, by curators, in which a, a PhD level, normally a PhD level biologist, has uh, made the attribution between a protein product uh, and a go term uh, by reading the literature. In addition, there are a number of automatic methods for uh, annotating Go terms, uh, and uh, the entirety of Tremble, for example, uh, has been automatically annotated with Go terms electronically, and these, of course, are of much less, uh, uh, less reliability. But nevertheless, could well be useful. Go is also used for a number of, 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 of uh, these annotations, of course, are used very extensively either by individual researchers or by those anal analyzing complex data, uh, particularly microarray data. But Go is also used for other purposes. And there are at least two uh, groups now, one public and one commercial, uh, which uh, have used uh, NLP methods uh, to annotate the entire Medline corpus with Go. Uh, the public one is uh, Go PubMed uh, in Germany, and there's also a commercial, a commercial company which does this. And uh, Go is actually being used quite extensively uh, by the NLP community uh, in, in the, for the biomedical literature. And that is not something that we, fores we foresaw. So Go was founded, um, many of the talks here have been, uh, have, uh, have, have been historical. Uh, Go was founded the decision uh, to found Go was taken at ISMB in Montreal. In fact, on the Bioontologist bio Day of uh, uh, ISMB in Montreal uh, in July 1998 um, by Steve Kurvitz, who was at SGD, uh, Susie Lewis at uh, Berkeley, uh, and Judy Blake uh, from Bar Harbor and myself. Uh, and um, we called it the Gene Ontology uh, because we had just spent an entire day uh, in a totally windowless room in the basement of a horrible hotel in Montreal, listening to a lot of AI people uh, talking about ontologies. And we thought, basically, they were wasting their time uh, and uh, that we could do something of practical utility. Uh, and we called it the gene ontology really to tease them and to annoy them. Uh, and I'm afraid it worked. And it slightly backfired 
um, but uh, in it, 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 this use uh, of the word ontology, and I'll come back to this later, uh, has at least stuck uh, in this community. Uh, but originally, uh, it, um, it, was, it, it was done probably by me, I can't remember, um, uh, because I was so fed up uh, of having spent this day lis- listening to a lot of AI people talking about prologue and lisp and ghastly things like that, which I don't understand. Anyway, um, but, but in, in effect, um, about a month later, uh, six of us got together at the Banbury uh, uh, Centre of Cold Spring Harbour Labs um, on Long Island, um, and uh, Judy, Susie, myself, uh, Mike Cherry came from SGD, as did David Botstein, and Janan Epic, Janan Epic from uh, MGD. And it was really at that meeting in Cold Spring Harbour in August 98. Um, eight years ago, uh, that we decided formally to, 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 to collaborate and build uh, uh, the structure controlled vocabulary for, for the description uh, of gene products within the context of our databases. And I already had a kind of pre uh, 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 an ergo, uh, um, which I've been trying to sell for several years. I remember talking about it at ISMB in Thessalonica, where it went down like the proverbial lead balloon. Um, and uh, that was the basis of the Go. And it was very hard work. So this is a version of the Go, um, actually a pre, um, from November 1998, uh, which I had done. You can see from the word count at the bottom uh, that it had about 3,000 terms in it, uh, and it was in a very, very idiosync- idiosyncratic syntax, and I'm not going to explain that. Um, but fairly soon, uh, Susie Lewis's group in Berkeley and uh, 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 her programmers, particularly John Day Richter uh, and, uh, and uh, Chris Mungle, uh, uh, took this and turned it in to, uh, and designed a, a, f- a f- far more rigorous uh, uh, um, implementation of Go. And this thing was, ma- was maintained in Emacs, uh, or VI, I can't even remember now, uh, but basically a text editor. And here Susie and I. Uh, you, can, you can see that I'm clearly despairing at this stage, uh, working in Banbury uh, in 1998. Un- unfortunately, there was no group photograph taken. I don't, um... So, that, as uh, Amos uh, remarked, I think, on the first day, uh, ontologies have become very fashionable, uh, particularly if you want to try and persuade funders to give you money. Uh, to do what, uh, what uh, uh, Amos thinks uh, is simply a controlled vocabulary. Uh, and uh, to a certain ex- extent, that is true. And there are some really crap ontologies out there. And this is an example of a, an ice cream ontology uh, from uh, the New, New Yorker, uh, actually from, I think, about 19, 19, uh, 1988. However, even the, the gene ontology, uh, which has now been developed for eight years, uh, has problems. And I wanted to discuss three of the problems with the Go. Um, the first is that the relationships uh, in Go are uh, the two relationships we use, is that I'm part of, um, are poorly defined and not used consistently. Uh, and that's going to change. Uh, so on the left, you see here, if you can read it, um, a, a, a small fragment of the Go as it currently exists. Uh, and uh, on the right, as it would exist, when we've implemented a new relationship type um, uh, to denote uh, the fact uh, uh, that one process um, uh, regulates another. And that will, whereas at the moment, uh, 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 these are all bundled in on a single is a relationship. And I'll come back to relationships in a minute (coughs) in in this context only. Um, The second is that Go carries a baggage of implicit ontologies. So if you look at the, some Go terms here, you'll see terms like cysteine biosynthesis, uh, myoblast fusion, which are compound terms. Um, and so biosynthesis you could think of as being uh, essentially an atomic process. And cysteine is a chemical. And, uh, but because cysteine biosynthesis is a sulfur amino acid biosynthesis, which is a amino acid biosynthesis, we have implicitly built within the Go a chemical ontology. Uh, and that's not our business. We have similarly have Im- built implicitly cell-type ontologies uh, 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 and anatomical ontologies. And that will change. There'll be, there is a major 
revision uh, under the hood. It won't, it won't be obvious to uh, certainly biologists using Go, uh, but, program, but, but structurally be a major change in which these implicit, uh, ontolo- uh, implicit relationships are, 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 are made declarative. And it, um, we um, will start probably uh, by integrating the cell ontology which was developed by, by Sue Ree, Jonathan Bard, and myself, and uh, is now uh, um, uh, maintained by, by, by Oliver Hoffman at Sandy in Cape Town. Uh, and uh, uh, as you see on the bottom here, is there a mouse here somewhere? Yeah. Um, in, uh, and this is a small, a very typical part of a Go Flat, Go flat file. <coughs> We will explicitly declare that B cell differentiation. Oh, God. How do I go back? Yeah. We will explicitly declare that B cell differentiation uh, is a compound term uh, of, of a Go term, cell differentiation, uh, and a term from the cell ontology, uh, a B cell. And that will be done also with chemicals using KEBI and anatomies using the various anatomical ontologies. And that will come within the next year, I hope. Uh, the third uh, problem is that we, for, by, by deliberate design, the uh, uh, three ontologies of Go were made orthogonal. Uh, and there's no relationship, for example, between mole- terms of molecular function uh, and biological process. Uh, clearly, clearly such terms exist. And we, know, we now know how to make those relationships, and those will be instantiated. Out of a concern that uh, uh, there is a prolifer- uh, is, we're seeing a proliferation of ontologies or controlled vocabularies in the biomedical domain. We set up the OBO website uh, as a way, as a single uh, shopping stop uh, in which uh, people could obtain these rather than simply having to crawl uh, around the web with Google. Um, and uh, uh, th- this includes now, I think, well over 60 different ontologies uh, submitted by different communities. However, this is now being taken over by the new NIH-funded National Center for Biomedical Ontology, uh, which is led by Mark Musen in Stanford and Susie Lewis in Berkeley. And part of, as part of the exercise of the NCBO, um, which is part of the NIH Roadmap pro- pro- Program, we're setting up, we have set up something called the Obo Foundry. And the Obo Foundry uh, is really to try and uh, and get some rigor uh, into the design uh, of ontologies in the biomedical domain and subject ontologies as you would uh, a, a manuscript for a journal, just some sort of peer review. <coughs> and uh, members who, uh, the communities which collaborate with the foundry, uh, agree to certain common principles. Um, and uh, the most important of which is that the ontology is open to all uh, without license, without click-through, without restraint, uh, and without having, without having to, to sell your mother-in-law. It must be perfectly, purely, freely available. Um, the second, uh, very important, is that, that the ontology must come from a community. And if two different communities develop an ontology, ontologies of the same domain, uh, we will work very hard to knock heads together so that they collaborate and come to an agreement. We don't want, because it destroys the essence and the utility of ontologies if we have rival ontologies covering the same biological domain. And community involvement uh, is exceptionally important. Uh, and the others, the, of these are, 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 are fairly straightforward. We, we want a common, common syntax. Um, we want good documentation. Um, and, and, and so on. Uh, the final point here uh, is very important, which is that the relationships are used within an ontology all come from a common relations ontology. And only if they do so, only if the meaning of a relationship between terms, like part of, is identical uh, in two, on two different ontologies, can you interoperate operate between those ontologies. Uh, and uh, a lot of work has, been, has gone in, particularly by Barry Smith in Buffalo uh, and Chris Mungal in Susie's group and others, uh, in, in, in coming up with rigorous log- logical definitions of relationships. And this was published uh, in what must be a first, uh, the first philosophical paper in genome biology uh, by Barry 
uh, and others uh, last year called Relations in Biomedical Ontologies. And this relations ontology on the OVO site is being maintained and, and the relationships which are uh, 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 are defined uh, in the language uh, of formal logic um, uh, will be extended, obviously. It's not fixed in stone. <coughs> Next few slides I've stole from Barry Smith, um, and uh, get, but, it, but they're, they're, they're fairly obvious. That good ontologies require the consistent use of terms. Uh, the definitions of the terms must be coherent and not circular. Um, and uh, the last, second point here is, is the one I just made, uh, that we, ma we must have a co coherent sh shared relationships types. It's very important, and this is very often misunderstood, uh, ontologies are representations of types. They, are not represent they, they don't represent instances. Instances belong in a database. Uh, types belong in an ontology uh, and there's been a lot of confusion on this also actually in the early days uh, on, on, on our part but not now uh, and uh, the nodes of an ontology uh, consist of a term it has a unique identifier uh, it can have one or more synonyms uh, and then it, it, it has a definition and it can have various other glosses whereas the uh, nodes are connected by arcs and these arcs are the relationships like, a, like is a uh, or part of. And these relationships are designed uh, uh, to support the search and the interoperation, search of, of, of ontologies uh, and, uh, uh, and the interoperation of ontologies. I want to end by talking about a particular ontology, uh, the sequence ontology, uh, which is maintained by uh, Karen Eilbeck, um, uh, who works uh, for the Berkeley Group but lives in somewhere called Salt Lake City, which I believe is in, in the middle of America somewhere, um, and is a, a, an ontology which we developed with Richard uh, Durbin and Lincoln Stein and Susie and myself uh, for the, the annotation of biological sequences. Um, and uh, for purposes of this talk, the major part of so uh, is, uh, is a, uh, a structure uh, uh, to describe features which can be located in sequence coordinates. But we have all sorts of definition problems. In fact, the different communities define, uh, use the same word for, for, for different, uh, 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 different concepts. And the, and the worst, I think, is pseudogene. Uh, where, uh, and here are just two examples. Uh, and it turns out to be extremely difficult. I mean, I was talking to Ken Rudd the other day, and, and, the, and, and uh, Ken Rudd and the E. coli community call a pseudogene what I would simply call a mutant allele. And these are quite serious difficulties which we have to get over. But the idea of so is to mark up a, 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 an annotated sequence so you can, you can actually do serious computation on it. I defy anyone to go to Embelbank uh, or GenBank, uh, and say, give me all the disystronic genes in Drosophila. But this is purely compu co computable, uh, because it's defined by the cardinality uh, of protein products and messenger RNAs. It should be computable, but it's not uh, in the existing uh, 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 nucleic acid sequence data archives. So, so it's quite small, it's about just about a thousand of terms, uh, and what I want to discuss n now um, is as an example of how ontologies, if, if well-designed and implemented with instance data, uh, can be used for serious computation. And it has a very extensive part, uh, part of relationships. So it says um, that um, a, 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 um, a regulatory region, for example, is part of a gene. And that's a definition we've made. Yeah? It's not a definition which everyone would accept uh, in biology. <laughs> and these relationships uh, allow validation of annotation, yeah. Um, and uh, because, for example, so declares that a three prime untranslated region is part of a messenger RNA. So, if you've annotated a, uh, a, a sequence uh, coordinate as being a three prime muti R, and that sequence coordinate is not included within the sequence coordinates of a messenger RNA. You, you know that you have made a mistake. 
and the computer can tell you that you've made a mistake, more importantly. And Karen Albeck realized um, that uh, we can now use the techniques of a, of, of a field called classic, classical extensional mariology, which is, which is a field uh, of, 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 of um, which uh, encompasses a formal, a formal theory of parts. And you, one can do operations on parts, very much like uh, you can do uh, uh, operations in set theory. Um, and uh, so you, you can do, you can do um, operations um, uh, um, to ask whether or not two parts overlap, uh, whether or not they're disjoint. You can do the products between parts, the difference between parts. And you can do this computationally. And this is exceptionally powerful. Um, and, um, and allows you to ask questions of annotated sequence data, and which has been marked up with the sequence ontology, which would otherwise be totally impossible to, to, to obtain, at least it, it, within a reasonable lifetime. And this is one of them. This was actually the first toy example we used. We marked up, or uh, the Berkeley group marked up, the chromosome 4 annotation of Drosophila melanogaster. Um, and if you have um, a, a genes uh, with multiple transcripts uh, 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 um, because of alternate splicing, and consider a single exon, clearly a single exon uh, can be shared among all of the transcripts of a single gene. Or a single exon can be unique to one of those transcripts uh, of that gene. Uh, or that exon can be found in some, but not all, uh, of the transcripts of that gene. Okay? And uh, clearly, that those are computable uh, by using these meriological relationships uh, 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 um, and the uh, calculus of the classical extensional meriology. So now we can ask um, whether these three classes of exon, um, uh, the unique exon, the, the uh, constitutive exons, those which are found in all transcripts of one gene, and, uh, and the, um, I've lost the mouse again, uh, and those exons which are found in some transcripts but not all, whether the distribution of those exons is different according to whether those exons are, uh, uh, are coding exons, whether they're five prime untranslated exons, or whether they're three prime untranslated exons. And uh, I don't know if you can read the figures there, um, <clears throat> but, for example, the unique exons um, are um, uh, uh, the distribution uh, um, uh, the, of, of exons between coding uh, and uh, 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 non coding exons is very different in Drosophila uh, as to whether these uh, exons are, are unique uh, to a particular. Uh, isoform of the messenger RNA or are, are common to all isoforms of, of messenger RNA. And this is, th this is really computing on sequence annotation in a way which is absolutely impossible if, uh, if you have to rely upon uh, an Embel GenBank feature table. Uh, and it shows the power uh, of, uh, a, 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 of a rigorous uh, uh, ontological description uh, of sequence space uh, and the utility um, of, of, of using that space uh, for, uh, uh, for genome annotation. And now, uh, I think all of FlyBase now, and I think all of SGD and WormBase perhaps, have, have now, are now using and implementing uh, the sequence ontology. So the, this, these are the logos um, of the groups uh, uh, um, which uh, uh, now form the Go Consortium. Uh, AstraZeneca is down there at the bottom because Ken Fassman gave us uh, seed money before the NIH uh, funded us. Um, and uh, the bulk of the uh, uh, GO uh, consortium is funded by a P41 grant uh, from the National Institutes of Health. Um, and uh, uh, you'll see the uh, Swiss Bot and Inter Interpro teams there, which are very important uh, uh, for the success of the GO. Uh, and we enjoy a very close collaboration uh, 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 with our colleagues uh, in these groups. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, my uh, co-PIs in the Go Consortium, uh, Judy Blake, who talked talk the other day, 
Michael, Michael Cherry um, of the Saccharomyces Genome Database in, in uh, Stanford, and Susie Lewis, who's here uh, from Berkeley, um, and Barry Smith in Buffalo, uh, who uh, is a philosopher very interested in biomedical ontologies, uh, who has been a great uh, help to us over the last two or three years, uh, getting more uh, uh, logical rigor and into the go. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Michael Ashburner? Thank you again, Lucas. No? No, no questions? Not. Everyone wants coffee. Oh, it's no, no, it's not coffee. Not, not coffee? No. Oh, it's Kathy. Yeah. I thought it was coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Andrea? Where are you, Kathy? Okay, so we get to the fourth talk <coughs> of this morning's session. Sorry, my voice is going away, but it's, I still need it for only a few hours. So then I can shut up. And our last speaker of this first half of the morning is Cathy Wu. Please, Cathy, come in. She is at the Protein Information Resource and the Georgetown University Medical Center, both in Washington, D.C., she, oops, that's uh, the spelling mister. She's a plant pathologist by training and computer scientist. She first developed several protein classification systems and databases like iProClass using uh, machine learning, I mean techniques, neural networks, and so on. And she now adds the PR group. As geographical links, I put Taipei, where you first studied, and West Lafayette, Purdue University, Lansing in Michigan, uh, Tyler, Texas, where you did most of the bioinformatics world and now Washington, D.C. I put George Whitson for, I mean, the bow link for, I mean, your part when you were in Washington, but then everyone in Unipro's consortium, I was not going to pick up a few names.